Just over a week ago, Apple announced the iPhone SE3, the iPad Air 5, some green stuff, and the Mac Studio with its matching display. Now all of this is in the hands of not just reviewers, but actual human beings too. So, what's good, what's not, and what's somewhere in the middle? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. We'll start with the easy stuff and we'll come to the Mac Studio shortly, but iPhone SE3. It's the same as before, with A15, 5G, and stronger glass added. Is it for me? No. But reading my comments section, there are a lot of people out there who inexplicably still prefer Touch ID over Face ID, even though it's less secure and more cumbersome. I get why people who just like the home button are used to it and they don't want to learn gestures. My wife was very much the same way when she upgraded from the iPhone 8 to the iPhone 12 mini, but a day or so later she was used to it and it's never been mentioned since. Speaking of the 12 mini, the SE3 has improved battery which is about on par with the smallest iPhone 12. Sadly, although it's better than the SE2, which was abysmal, the 12 mini's biggest complaint was also battery life, but better than before is still better and if you're opting for the iPhone SE, maybe you're not the heaviest iPhone user anyway. iPhone Air 5 for some reason now has an M1 inside it, and I didn't see that coming, and I don't really know why it did. Without ProMotion to drive Face ID or LiDAR, it seems a bit extra, but I have a couple of theories. Given that Apple didn't add mini LED to the smaller 11 inch iPad Pro last time round, and rumor has it that it won't get one this year either, does it mean the smaller iPad Pro doesn't really have a place in the lineup? Perhaps the iPad Pro is simply going to become the largest with the iPad Air and the increased price on the last generation, maybe taking the space of the 11 inch or in the case of the Air, the 10.9 inch slot. Maybe we just don't need both. Beyond that, it could simply be for those long rumored Oso oh Pro apps coming to the iPad and perhaps it's a big performance advantage for things like Final Cut and Logic. And maybe, just maybe, we could see hints of these apps making their way to iPad this June at WWDC. Although, as I said last year, I don't actually think they would release them at DubDub because they'd be for the next generation of operating systems, so they'd be out in September, October. Maybe we'll hear about them, maybe we won't. Uh, green phones. Um, they're fine. I don't think anyone was crying out for these to come out in green, but, uh, you know... If you were about to pick up an upgrade, you might like that colour. That's literally all the thoughts I have on them. But the Mac Studio, this is the main event by any measure, I'd say, although the SE will probably make Apple so much more money. It's exciting. It seems to be the most powerful computer you can actually buy right now if the benchmarks for the full bore M1 Ultra are to be believed, outperforming the 28-core Mac Pro by about 20% and having more compute performance than the NVIDIA RTX 3090. So is this 4K powerhouse what you need? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. There's a lot to unpack. So first of all, 4K gets you the Ultra, yes, with a pair of M1 Max chips attached together, but you'll only get 48 of those GPU cores uh, that are activated as this one uses binned chips. So you'll get 20 CPU cores, but if you want the full 64 cores of GPU, that's an extra grand. Still, it's very, very powerful, and if you need that, it's probably a good buy. But it's also probably worth getting the extra memory if you're doing the super high-end work, so going up from 64 to 128 gigs. And that's the thing, if you're not doing incredibly high-end work, you probably don't need an M1 Ultra. There are disadvantages. You'll need to add a lot of stuff to get a usable system as it doesn't include a keyboard or a mouse or a trackpad and a display will be handy too. Now I was down about the Apple Studio display initially because it's basically 5k panel from the iMac in a new coat and it costs more than a whole M1 iMac which has only got half a k less resolution and three inches less display size but you also get an M1 in it. But that said if you want to edit 4k video you're probably considering the Mac Studio and having a 5k display does let you have full res video plus your timeline and tools on screen. And of course, as well with that display panel, you do get the better camera, better than any Mac before. You get the center stage camera, which has the wide angle and tracks you within the space. You get multiple mics that will isolate your voice for calls, and you'll get some really capable speakers that include spatial audio too. But if you wanted to get this plus a set of Apple peripherals, i.e. keyboard, mouse, trackpad, any fun combination of those, you're going to be basically adding a couple of grand to your Mac Studios price tag. So is it worth it? Uh, yeah, probably, but it doesn't make 
that cheaper just because it's worthwhile. I think the Mac Studio is genuinely the most exciting thing that Apple has released as part of the Apple Silicon transition, but 99% of people who watch this absolutely shouldn't buy it. The reason? Because the M1 is just so good at what it already does, running my entire channel and anything else that I've needed in the past year without breaking a sweat. If M1 really isn't enough, it seems like the Mac Mini is still likely to get a Pro Model 2, probably with just the M1 Pro in it to fill the gap, which gives you the extra performance of having eight performance cores instead of four in the M1. The reason that we still think that's coming is the Intel Mac Mini is still appearing on Apple's website alongside the Mac Pro that the studio basically just decimated on Apple's stage. This is here to replace the high-end iMacs. The studio is here for those high-end iMacs, just in a way that's a little bit more modular than before, which is what everyone was shouting out for. Everyone wanted modular Macs and Apple gave it to them, giving them the display that is independently replaceable from the computer and everyone's response was, I want an all-in-one, I want my Mac Pro back. Sometimes you just can't please everyone. But what do you think about the Apple uh, Mac Studio? Have you pre-ordered one? Has it arrived at your house today? Are you excited about it? Let me know down in the comments and thanks to all the Patreons right over here for supporting the channel. If you want to get these videos a little bit earlier and without the adverts from YouTube, all you need to do is head over to icavedave.com forward slash Patreon and all the stuff's there for you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.